Majid, thank you for that introduction. Yours is a strong, passionate, clear, authentic, liberal voice, and we look forward to it being heard in Parliament after the election. Our conference, uh, we gather at a time when the economy is in better shape than at any time since we entered government in 2010. And that's happening for a reason. Conference, this economic recovery would not be happening without the Liberal Democrats. Now, my inspiration has come from the millions of people and the hundreds of thousands of businesses who are powering our economy. And I'm proud to have worked so closely with Nick Clegg, with Vince Cable, our brilliant business secretary, with David Laws and the rest of our economic team to help those people and those businesses do what they do best. Our policies and our values have created the right climate for them to succeed. This recovery has created millions of new jobs, has restored growth, <clears throat> has put Britain back on its feet and back to work. And our country needs our policies and our values in the next parliament too, to sustain the recovery, to finish the job of balancing the books and to do so fairly. We set out our economic vision to make Britain a country that offers opportunity for everyone. Our aim is to make Britain the largest, most successful, most sustainable economy in Europe. And I can tell you, conference, that that aim is within our grasp. Getting there starts with our manifesto pledge to balance the books by 2010 and, crucially, to do so fairly, 2018. <laughs> well spotted, the gentleman in the front row. <laughs> our Liberal Democrat plan will share the burden with the best off making a fair contribution. That's why, for example, we bring in a high value property levy, because it cannot be right that a home worth £50 million pays the same council tax as one worth £500,000. So we will introduce new bans on top of council tax to make sure those people make a fair contribution. And it's also why we've already set out plans to raise more money from banks. We would introduce an additional supplementary corporation tax charge on the banks raising over £1 billion. As the economy is recovering and bank profits are rising, it is right that we should ask a sector that did so much to cause the financial crisis to contributing more to repair the mess. And it's also why we will ask those that benefit from our society but who wish to remain non-resident, the so-called non-doms, to pay more. Now, <clears throat> now, most commentators agree that to finish the job of balancing the books, the next government will need to find around £30 billion of further measures to deal with the deficit. We've set out clearly the mix of tax and spending reductions that we would employ to achieve this. We'd raise around £8 billion in extra taxes on the best off and ensuring that large corporations, including the banks, pay their fair share. We'd raise £6 billion by cracking down even harder on tax evasion and on aggressive tax avoidance. The rest would come from spending measures. And because we've guided the economy through the last five stormy years, in our vision, there is no need to raise the tax rates that affect most of us. VAT, income tax, national insurance, corporation tax for businesses. None of these need to rise on our plans. In fact, far from raising income tax, we will cut it. A manifesto pledge to cut income tax by another £400. Now, over the last five years, we, the Liberal Democrats, have delivered the largest tax cut for working people in living memory. Just think back to 2010. The amount you could earn before starting to pay income tax was only £6,475. Within a few weeks from now, it will have rocketed to £10,600. That's the biggest income tax cut for working people in a generation. Lower taxes for 26 million working people, only delivered because of you, only delivered because of the Liberal Democrats.
Now, you may remember David Cameron telling Nick in the leaders' debates that it couldn't be done. To him I say, oh yes, we could. No wonder he's running away from debating Nick again on the television. <laughs> and we want to go much, much further to 12 and a half thousand pounds within the next parliament. This tax move on its own is already having a transforming effect on our economy. It's making work pay. It's allowing people to keep more of their own money. Gladstone would have been proud. The only party offering a fairer tax system in this election is us, the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> We've made a manifesto pledge for equal care for mental and physical health. Conference, our mantra of stronger economy, fairer society, makes the link that we want a better economy for a reason. To make our society fairer. That's why I'm so proud of Nick Clegg's drive to end the Cinderella status of mental health once and for all. And then, and then what about education? A manifesto pledge to protect education, not just in schools, but from nursery to 19. The Tories are clear. They will cut the school's budget as part of their drive to shrink the state. Our education system is the engine of opportunity. That's why we will protect its funding. And as events of recent weeks have shown, nothing upsets, quite rightly, nothing upsets law-abiding taxpayers more than people who think they can evade paying the tax they owe. Paying the tax you owe isn't an optional extra. It's a legal requirement. And quite rightly, fiddling the benefit system is a crime and a social taboo. But for too long, tax avoidance and tax evasion has been seen by the rich and privileged more like a sport than the crime it is. So in our future vision, there'll be even more measures to crack down hard on the tax dodgers. I want to see tax evasion as socially unacceptable as the drunk driver. I want to see those who aid, abet, facilitate, or encourage tax evasion hit as hard with criminal and financial penalties as the tax evaders themselves. So that will be in our manifesto too. And we have clear and distinct plans to make sure that we build the infrastructure our country needs. The roads, the railways, the digital networks, and yes, the housing that will enhance our financial stability and help unleash yet more growth. After the books are balanced in 2017-18 financial year, our new fiscal rules will set the country on the path to lowering our national debt to sustainable levels. But provided that goal is on track, we will also allow borrowing for that productive investment. Investment in roads and railways can open up economic opportunity. As I saw in the southwest just a couple of weeks ago, in Torbay, I saw with Adrian Sanders the completed, nearly completed, King's Kurzweil Bypass. It is very important, thank you. It's a project, in fact, that people in that area have been campaigning for for over 40 years to achieve. It's one, of, it's one of hundreds of projects now being delivered because there are Liberal Democrats in charge of economic policy. Now, you all know there's a coalition budget this week. Now, next year, I want us to be delivering a Liberal Democrat budget. And this is what it will look like. And what would be in it? Tax cuts for working people, an income tax personal allowance of £12,500, balancing the books fairly, not on the backs of working people on low pay, a new tax on high-value property, a new crackdown on tax dodgers, protection of the education budget from cradle to college, no rises in the taxes that most people pay, VAT, income tax, national insurance. A Liberal Democrat plan for a stronger economy and a fairer society. That's what we will deliver in the next Parliament. And doesn't our country need it? Because when you look at the election campaign, it's a choice between truly stark alternatives. You have the Conservatives. A Conservative Party that wants to cut for cut's sake 
even after the books are balanced. A conservative party with no heart, but two minds, one to stay in Europe, the other to leave. A conservative party that wants to balance the books solely on the backs of the most vulnerable in our society. I think the prospect of a Britain under a majority conservative government is grim indeed. And haven't we all groaned when they use their soulless mantra, long-term economic plan? The truth is, their long-term economic plan means long-term economic pain for millions of families. And then you have labor. Not so much long-term economic plan as short-term economic catastrophe. A Labour Party so deep in denial about its role in the greatest financial crash of modern history that they seem determined to repeat the same mistakes again. Their vision is unclear, their policies flawed, their credibility non-existent. Listening to the incoherent waffle that seems to pass for Labour policy, you really wonder why Ed Miliband bothered to stand for Labour leader at all when he has so little idea about how he wants to govern. And then you have the nationalists. Uh, their message can be seductive. They usually deliver it wrapped up in the saltire or the Welsh flag or with a garish pound sign. <laughs> but at the core of nationalism, be it in Scotland and Wales or the anti-Europeanism for the UK as a whole, is a belief in separation, in pulling us apart rather than drawing people closer together. In their zeal to, to achieve what they see, as the holy grail of separation, they lose all perspective. They take their eye off the ball. The SNP leaders are obsessed still with independence, but when it comes to the economy, they misjudge all the big calls. A few weeks ago, Nicola Sturgeon came on her, one of her regular day trips to London to set out her economic vision for the UK. But analysis shows that she was factually wrong. Her plans would lead to more debt, not yes, not less. So the choice in this election is stark indeed. Heartless Tories, clueless Labour, reckless nationalists intent on slamming our recovery into reverse. But there is another option. And that's to stick with us, the Liberal Democrats. To stick with our vision, our vision to finish the job of balancing the books and doing so fairly. And crucially, of turning the corner to a brighter future once the job is done. And let's remember, this election is about so much more than what we've done in the past. It's about what we can do in the future. And we have a vision of the future that is very different from the other parties. And I can tell you what's so different, it's this. Our vision is optimistic, it's positive, it's full of hope. Now, you might all be really in shock that I'm talking about optimism, but I am. And here's why. These last five years of repairing the economy of having to take the difficult decisions, of having to fight through the tough times, have put us in a place that is the envy of so many other countries. We are now within touching distance of being able to finish the job balancing the books. Now, that will be a landmark in its own right. But reaching that point means more. It means that we can turn the corner, that spending can rise as the economy grows that we can borrow responsibly, as long as debt is falling as a share of our nation's income, to invest in our railways, our roads, our digital networks, the very things that will help unleash further economic growth. Conference, some have asked me if I find the prospect of this election daunting. And I say no. I say no because I know who we are fighting for, and I know what we are fighting for. We're fighting for the millions of people that have secured one of the new jobs created in this recovery and the many more that seek work. We're fighting for the millions of young people who are gaining self-respect and a stake in their world on one of the two million apprenticeships that Vince Cable has invested in. We're fighting for the millions of people on low and middle incomes who are benefiting from the income tax cuts that we, not the Tories, have fought for and delivered. We're fighting to keep Britain anchored where it needs to be in the centre ground. And what are we fighting for? We're fighting for fairness. Fairness at the heart of the government of this great country of ours. Fairness that rejects separation, that rejects division. Fairness that rewards work. Fairness that provides opportunity for all. We're fighting 
secure this recovery. We're fighting to save the soul of this country from a clueless Labour Party, a heartless Conservative Party, from the delusions of nationalism. A conference, your fortitude in these difficult times has enabled liberalism to deliver so much in these past five momentous years. Now let's march forward, united, proud of what we have achieved, inspired by what we can achieve. Don't believe those who write off the Liberal Democrats. Let me tell you, I'll be back, we'll be back, and because of us, Britain will be back too. Thank you.